Hello and welcome to this vast chariot of regal sophistication, otherwise known as the Range Rover Autobiography. Now, this is the 2017 model. I uh, collected it all of three days ago. And if you're a regular subscriber to this channel, you'll probably be wondering why I bought another one. Because that's right, I did have the ownership of one for the last three years. It's been fantastic, but it has accumulated 60,000 miles uh, and began to develop a whine on the gearbox, which I wasn't feeling all too comfortable with. So anyway, took a drive in the 2017 model, really enjoyed it and decided to upgrade. However, if you're also a regular subscriber to this channel, you might quite rightly be questioning, why do you have a Range Rover sitting alongside an RS6? Well, there's two reasons. First of all, these days I have a wife <laughs> and um, she loves this car. Uh, we got so much use out of the Range Rover over the last three years that it really is the kind of car that becomes part of the family. Um, and it was just, the old one was just starting to get tired and beat and we decided to upgrade it, but we still wanted to keep one because they are brilliant all round cars. Second of all, and this is more from my point of view, on paper, if you were to read the specs of the RS6 and this car, in terms of its fundamental platform, they are ridiculously similar. It's, you know, it's a four wheel drive, four door, five seat car with a big boot. And it's that practical platform. However, the way that these two cars deliver that experience could not be further apart. Now, yesterday I drove the RS6 and that thing just attacks tarmac. In fact, in my uh, previous video in that car, I think I referred to it as the tarmac terrorist because it's just got so much torque and power and it's such a sort of performance orientated practical car that for all of its qualities, it's never actually that relaxed. It's never too chilled. The suspension even on comfort is never that soft, predominantly because it's got much larger wheels and therefore lower profile tires. And also just by it, the inherent nature of it being a more performance orientated car dealing with 600 horsepower, just its setup has to be more stiff. And it's just always chomping at the bit. Now don't get me wrong, you can drive it chilled, but there is nothing like a Range Rover. When you get in it, and you close that door, and the soft closed doors, it locks you in your own personal vacuum that isolates you from the rest of the world. And you can say that a Bentley does that, and a Rolls Royce does that, and yes they do, and they do it very well. However, the difference when you get into a Rolls Royce is that you sort of sit down into it. With a Range Rover, you step up on it, and you assume this entirely different perspective of the driving world around you. I think people underestimate how much of a dramatic effect your seating position has on the overall experience of you driving a car. Now, this thing, you climb up into it and you can assess and survey the world around you. I love looking over hedge tops, seeing the world from a different perspective, an angle which I definitely don't normally experience in sports cars and even the RS6. That elevated ride height just adds an entirely different experience and it's one that I really enjoy. Now, to further back up and reinforce the reason why I like this car from a chilled mentality point of view is the subtle spec changes that we opted for on this car versus the previous Range Rover. We've gone for a smaller wheel size. Aesthetically, I'm not so pleased, which I knew and I expected just by having a smaller wheel, it just doesn't look as aesthetically pleasing. However, with smaller wheel comes larger tire, and this is the key thing here. We've opted for the larger balloony tires. The ride quality, and this thing rides on a bed of air. You waft along, it absorbs bumps and grids with little effort. It just skips over things. And the more I drive it, the more I picked it up on that, particularly driving roads that I'm very familiar with and that I drive day in, day out. When I go over certain bumps and potholes, this thing just skips over it without batting an eyelid. And it's a very smooth environment in which to be. 
Now, the other thing, the early Range Rover we had was a 2014 car. Even though it was registered in 2014, its platform was a 2013 build. And as a result, it had the old school infotainment system and the old dash. When you used to start that car up, it would take a fair few seconds for the computer to kick into gear and allow you to interact with it in order to, I don't know, access the sat nav or the radio. Uh, even the reverse camera would come on very slowly. In terms of, I'd have already done my reverse maneuver before it had even turned on. This system, well, first of all, we've got this massive 10 inch touchscreen here and everything is just a swipe away. It's very big and clear. The response of it as well is more responsive than the old screen. I will say, however, it's not as responsive as I would have expected it to be. It's funny, nowadays, when you when you interact with anything that has a touch screen or a swipe screen, you just can't help but benchmark it against the most familiar form of that being an iPhone or an iPad. When I see iPhones, which are like this thin, this big, and they are absolutely razor sharp and instant, and then you see this thing with a 10 inch screen and a computer behind it like this big, why haven't you made it so it's like ultra super responsive and crisp? I don't know. Having said that, it is much better than it was and just a lot more of a joy to interact with. Coupled with that, big screen in front as well, the display now is fully digital. A lot more crisp environment. I just feel like I'm sat in a car that is just up to date. It feels part of 2017. The interior quality too. Now I never complained about the interior quality of the original car that I own. You step into it and it feels very premium. However, again, and this is the subtle differences that I'm not sure you'd appreciate unless you owned the previous generation car. The jump between a 2014 Range Rover autobiography to a 17, the everything you interact with just feels a lot more quality. The headliner is, I mean, they've got all this lovely perforated leather. The extension of the leather as well feels more complete throughout. And it really adds to the ambiance of being in a very luxury environment. Uh, we opted for the more sort of traditional wooden effect interior. That makes it feel very land of gentry and countryfied. Um, which brings me around to the spec on the outside. Now, typically today is not incredibly sunny uh, and the car, being driven through the rain is getting a bit dirty, but the color is very interesting. So I've always been a fan of the traditional color, which is British racing green, made famous on the likes of Aston Martins, particularly classic Aston Martins. Well, Range Rover have introduced a color called ultra metallic British racing green. It's very similar to a color they also do called Aintree green, which is a lot more of a flat conventional color. Think of it of Aintree green, but with a very heavy metallic fleck in it. In the sunshine, this thing pops hard. And I actually love the sculpture of the Range Rover. It's one of the reasons why I opted for another Range Rover. People might be watching this thinking, why didn't you go for something like a Bentley Bentayga? To drive, they're fabulous, and the interior quality is even better than this. But just the ownership, I like to walk up to a car and really look forward to being around it. And the Bentayga for me at the minute just as is aesthetically underwhelming. I just can't gel with that. The Range Rover, however, as I mentioned, it's regal and I love it. And it's got a really timeless aesthetic that pleases my eyeballs. Now, this is the 4.4 litre V8 diesel. Very similar engine to the previous 2014 car, which I enjoyed when it was on a run. Once this massive vehicle got rolling, it was great. The problem that I found was the low speed pickup, particularly at junctions, was always a little bit bogged down. It felt hesitant to take off. And therefore, sometimes when I was at junctions, you know, just inherently these days, there's a lot of traffic on the road. And when you get up to a roundabout, there are select moments upon which you can make your exit. And sometimes they have to be swift getaways. I never felt entirely comfortable doing it sometimes in the Range Rover because off the line, it never picked up that quickly. However, upgrade, which is very, very cool in this model, is a mode called low traction launch, which is basically 
the ability to take off a lot quicker from slower speeds. Whether they've listened to feedback or the development team have just experienced it themselves, the one thing that that car was crying out for was exactly that feature, and I am happy to report it works fantastically. Off the mark, it gets off with much more vigor and enthusiasm, uh, and it just, yeah, it just makes the car feel a lot more dynamic, so it doesn't feel labored, and it doesn't, uh, well, in fact, it does a very good job of disguising its weight. So with it still being the 4.4 V8, it's still running 334 brake horsepower, which you would say is a bit of a d disappointment that they haven't upgraded the horsepower on this car, considering it's quite a few years older and therefore more evolved. However, it m more importantly, I think, is the torque. And the torque they have upgraded to 740 newton meters, no less, which in a car like this is very welcome. It's the torque, the torsional power, that is exactly the kind of stuff you need to get you off the line and basically haul this chunk along the road. And that is a very welcome addition indeed. Now, being the autobiography, it comes with the majority of features. There is one thing, however, when I was specking this car, I was a little bit disappointed in, really. Um, if you watch the channel regularly and you caught a rare glimpse of when, on the occasions, the rare occasions, that I did feature uh, the original Range Rover, you'll notice that the interior is almost identical. Other than the wood trim and the improved overall quality, the color, this sort of cream interior, is exactly the same. My ideal spec was to go British Racing Green and a sort of chestnut interior. I thought I would, I would be able to spec that. However, in order to get a chestnut interior, I was told that I had to go for a bespoke option. I couldn't, it wasn't part of their sort of normal lineup, which I was really surprised at. This car's a hundred thousand pounds and there was only a couple of swatches I could choose from. There was like a sort of dark chocolate brown, this, black, maybe something else. I've forgotten because I ordered it like eight months ago. Um, but yeah, I couldn't choose any more than that without paying a disproportionate amount of cash. Now with this thing being a car that gets used as a truck, it's not, I'm not super passionate about it that I haven't been able to tailor every bespoke element of it, but I would think at a hundred grand, you would want to be able to get it pretty much exactly how you wanted it. So there you have it. This is the new car, the new chariot of sophistication. And uh, yeah, it's gonna make more appearances on the channel. I know there's a good chunk of you out there that just enjoy a good quality practical truck. And here it is, and I'm here to uh, yeah, feast your eyeballs some more on it. So uh, let me know, please let me know in the comments below the kind of stuff that you wanna see with cars like this. We've got our access to the RS6 and this regularly. Well anytime you want so uh, yeah I'd love to know the kind of insight you guys want and ideas as well because I love hearing your feedback and activating on that lots more to come with this uh, ultra metallic British racing green paint needs a bit of TLC uh, and we're probably gonna get this thing paint protection filmed because it is a beautiful paint and I want it to last with this thing being used day in day out it's gonna take a pounding so that's coming soon there's actually some really quite shocking interests uh, that have come as a result of uh, getting this thing straight from factory that will be highlighted in that video. So be sure to look out for that. As always guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Ciao.